Breaker Brook 23, and today we're going to take a look at some of these smaller boxes. I'm getting that corner uh, cleaned out a little bit. So these are going to be mostly accessories, and um, yeah, let's just get to it. All right, I got to get this shelf done, get my XYL off my back. Package here we have the what is that? Oh, nice. Ooh, I really like these a lot. So this is a Drake W4 watt meter. It's really nice. This is a an art reads out an RMS, so none of those feel good watts peak envelope power reading meters. Um, I've seen a couple different versions of this. I may have the other one as well. I've seen the copper clad uh, version of this and basically you can just unscrew this and take out the little um, module here and mount it underneath your desk or somewhere and uh, yeah this is pretty neat reads forward and reverse and I like to run this between my radio and amplifier so there's that alright let's get rid of that let's go to the next one get some of these little boxes opened up this one here, as you've probably already seen on the tag, I've marked this one. So, really nice little microphone, and this is one of my one of my favorite mics. Actually, I like most every Turner mic. So this is the Turner Plus Two, as set up there. Many different versions of this. This is a great all-around performing microphone on AM and sideband. Maybe leaning a little more towards AM, actually. And this has got um, um, almost a Turner Plus 3 sound, but in this old-school cool look. And I have this wired for Cobra, I believe. Where's that? Okay, I've got an unmarked box here, and something's flapping around in this thing, so uh, I, didn't, I didn't pack this one too carefully. And I don't know why. Let's see, let's put that up there. Is that a radio? Oh, that's cool. Oh. Alright. That is the matching speaker to the Stoner Pro 40. I have done the, um, the Dynamat modification to this. I've also got a, a, an inductor in here so it rolls off the ultra high frequencies. So this has a really nice sound to it. I'll do a video on that particular unit one day, just on its own. All right, then we can finish the, uh, the stoner stuff there. Let's open up another one. Let's see, what do I have? Here? Let's go with this box. Unmarked. And I think Dirty Diaper had a great idea. I should probably just get these boxes just almost uh, opened all the way and then just rip them open, but... I don't know. This is kind of like Christmas for me, so I appreciate you guys sticking with me. Um, listening to me ramble about all this junk. And, uh, I don't know. You know, we're radio nerds, right? Or if you weren't a radio nerd, you wouldn't be watching this channel anyway. Oh, look at this. We got some cool things. Oh, dude. Ha, 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 ha. All right. I own three of these that I know of. May have more. This microphone is awesome. This is an RF Limited CR577. I believe this came from a Bill Good idea. And what this was, and I'm sure there's more collectors out there that can school me on that. But I used to sell these, and I only sold a couple. I think I ordered like a half a dozen, and I only saw, sold like one or two, and I just kept the rest for myself. This microphone is probably right up there in the top two or three as far as being my favorite sounding microphone. This matches my voice so well. Um, this is a uh, kind of... Uh, this came, I think the idea, from what I understood, the idea of this came up because uh, a static stopped making the uh, 575, I believe it was, with the uh, tone control on it. And uh, it was a ceramic microphone, and um, yeah, that thing sounds awesome. All right. This was a factory switch box when you would buy an Avanti antenna, like the Moonraker 4 um, and the Moonraker 6. And it's just been an all-around good 
antenna switch for me. I've had that since I was a young man. I don't even know why the hell that is that's in there. Um, let's see, what do we got? All right. Just a little random TRC-201 walkie-talkie. I was kind of doing walkie-talkies there for a little while. Um, I like the old school walkie-talkies. That's a little modern for me, but that's the way it goes. And this is the radio that started it all. This is my um, Realistic Rover 1500. And let me see if I can zoom. I need to get back here. Okay, so... Uh, the <laughs> KHW1276. Yeah, so um, I got this for Christmas when I was in the fifth grade. And this is the what started it all. This is the radio. Uh, I had channels 13, 14, and 19. Uh, channel 13 here in Salt Lake City was the Utah Diesel Control Channel. A bunch of big strapping stations on the east bench of Salt Lake would help the truck drivers find uh, their locations they were going to. Kind of like an old school, original um, Google map type thing, right? And then channel 14, of course, that's where all the walkie-talkie guys hung out. And then, of course, channel 19. This literally is the radio that got me started. I had walkie-talkies when I was younger. Um, but um, that watt-and-a-half walkie-talkie was the one that really got me out. So, anyway. Uh, yeah, studio mic. I used to be... Well, I used to think that I was going to set up a hi-fi station, and I did for a while, and that was a joke. That hi-fi audio was just a joke. Um, honestly, I'd rather just plug a plug a microphonium into the front. Okay, there's another modern-style walkie-talkie. Um, I love this, this old walkie-talkie. Um, I've done a video on this. This was the old 23-channel. Um, 5 watt walkie talkie that's why they called it the 23 plus 5 and this is a solid performing rig takes uh, God, what did I, I think you put 10 batteries in there this thing still works very very well um, that's actually that's actually kind of fun to bring out um, yeah car stereo faceplate oh this is kind of hammered this is I talked about this microphone in my high gain 8 video this is the um, high gain version, and I need to do some work on this. This is the high gain uh, base station power mic. Um, yes, it does sound like the Radio Shack power mic. Um, you know, not a bad sounding mic actually. Um, this is the Cobra CA72 microphone. This would be the power mic that you would have put on, say, a uh, Cobra 2000 back in the day when you bought one of those brand new. And then this is the realistic amplified mic. This is probably the version that we all know. I know these things are dusty critters. Um, yeah, but we'll get them all cleaned up and uh, bring them back to life. This works very well. And what I did is I left it wired for Radio Shack 5 wire. Okay, but I made a little jumper cord so I can go 5 wire in um, to Cobra, standard Cobra wiring. So that's. That's kind of cool. Let's see here. Let's. Um, I know I'm making a mess. But I'm trying to be quick about this. I don't want to bore you guys. Uh, we'll do one more box. Got to make. Got to make way here. So if I'm going to do a 15-minute video, let's make it worth it. All right. This one says D104 and Turner mics, but it's pretty heavy, and I, I highly doubt. All of my turners are in there. We'll see, because they're probably scattered all over the place. There we go. I love this packing. Oh my gosh, look at this. This is just a box full of junk. D104 plate. The Stryker 10K mobile antenna. That's interesting. Various microphones. I love these old school Radio Shack mics like this, right? Midland. These are the, the coffin mics, they call these, right? Coffin mics. Um, caliber coffin mic. I really like these. These are a great um, replacement microphone. Another high gain mic. So, uh, really not worth any value. There's really no value to them, but um, they, um, they are necessary if you ever find an old high gain. All right, here's another Silver Eagle. Um, this one's in pretty good shape, actually, so 
it's a keeper and this is wired to oh five wires so this would go on like a what a Cobra 2000 or oh or that Madison yeah uh, okay oh, cool there's some sheets all right this is an old Turner single sideband I want to say, oh this I think I had this on my high gain Utopia and let's see what else we've got here we've got a headless lollipop um, oh yes okay I told you guys I was into into the turners now I don't man this is embarrassing these things are just shag nasty dirty these things these things have been in uh, some ugly storage this will clean up and if you guys want videos on these I will I was going through a Turner Super Sidekick phase, um, and I ran this one, I believe, on my Stoner Pro 40, and um, yeah, it worked okay. It was all right. It's definitely worthy of a Stoner. You got to watch what you put those things on because they can get really bassy and annoying sounding. But that being said, one of my favorites. I told you guys a while ago about this Lafayette range boost. God dang it, these things are dirty. Um, this microphone, as you can see, is a Turner. All right. But rumor has it, and I don't remember who I told or who, who I heard this from. Uh, the, I ran this on my Madison. This made my Madison sound awesome. And from, the story goes, oh, there's another mic in there. Holy Jesus, Murphy. Anyway, the story goes is um, when Lafayette contracted Turner to make this microphone for them, um, they had they wanted something a little different. I think in the EQing, the way this microphone sounded. So this mic actually sounds kind of like a cross between a, a Turner Plus Three B, which is a noise canceling uh, seven seventy six style mic, and then a Super Sidekick. And honestly, that's probably one of my best sounding Turners. And I love it. And here, here is my, oh my gosh, here's my microphone that I had when I was about 12, 13 years old. Um, and I've left it the way it is, actually. I had two bases for this. Back in the day, I'm sure we've all seen the D104s with the holes drilled in the base. Well, I took another base and uh, drilled holes in it, put my Tweety Birds in, and then I put it back to stock, but left this dangling out. It's been like this forever. So let's see if we can hear this. Let's see here. Let's see if we can do this. Let's see. Hold on. Work with me here. Okay, here we go. Forgot where the mic is on this phone. Where's the mic? And then, of course, every time you key up, it goes doo highly annoying, and yet really cool. i got a whole drawer full of Tweety Birds somewhere. All right, well, that seems to be it. So, my God, that's embarrassing. I, look, guys, I do not like my gear dusty like this. This is, this is just driving me nuts just walk, looking at it this way. But, towards the end days of the move... Uh, everything was upside down and crazy. I was just, just yarding stuff off the shelves and stuff. And we had a lot of pollen up in my radio room where I was. And I constantly had to feather dust everything. And, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty crazy up there. So, anyway, microphoniums, meters. And, uh, now we'll get back to CB radios in the, um, next video. So, hopefully, I haven't bored you guys to death. And, uh, please stick with me and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.